Team, g'day and welcome to another episode of Get Coached. I am Coach Kef. Today we're going to have a chat about New Year's resolutions and how most people fail. And at about this time is when um, the motivation is starting to wear off and the physical and mental fatigue of trying to achieve something kicks in. So we want to have a bit of a chat today and help you achieve your goal. I don't really like the words New Year's resolution. Um, I think they're terrible. There's a million other words in the dictionary to use. I think they've got a stigma of failure around them. So making sure that um, New Year's rec- will change your wording of it, change your terminology, whatever you want to do, but um, make it positive. Make it, make it a positive change. So firstly, a couple of stats about New Year's resolutions. One, most resolutions last about two to three weeks or people trying to change their um, whatever it is they're changing. Um, 55% of those lifestyle changes are health-related, health, weight, fitness, smoking, diet, etc., etc., etc. So, you know, probably re- relevant to most of you guys in some sense. Only 8% of people who set a new goal over the New Year's period actually achieve it. So eight people out of every 100. It's a um, pretty big failure rate, isn't it? Why? We'll talk about potentially why later, particularly in the health space. I got no idea um, about pretty much anything else, so we'll, we'll stick to we'll stick to health and fitness in um, in my little world. Eighty percent of people fail, which is completely fail, and the other few just kind of float around half, not don't really get to where they want to go, but you know keep trying and trying and trying, and just may not just be going about what they're trying to achieve the right way. Um, and fifty five percent of people don't even make it to a month, and the rest of them last about six weeks, um, which is a pretty decent dropout rate, isn't it, when you think about it. So what are we going to chat about today? We're just going to talk about setting goals. Um, obviously for us, it's going to be more around health and fitness, so um, that's where we, we're, the space that we're going to predominantly talk about, and so how to set it, and how to possibly make your goal more achievable, or your resolution, whatever you want to call it, uh, a little bit more achievable. Um long term so I guess um, first up setting it setting your goal okay what do you want to achieve um, you'll see this everywhere write it down write down what it means to you and why you want to do it it's it's, it's amazing what that can do um, to your belief in what you're going to achieve so write down your goal you know I want to run X over Y or I want to lose weight or I want to eat better or whatever it is write it down why what does it mean to you? Why is doing that important to you? Not to you. There you go. Um, because if it's not something that you truly want, achieving it is going to be a hell of a lot harder when you have the bad days. And the bad days is normally what um, what make people just drop it, whatever it is. Uh, gym memberships go through the roof at this time of year. Gyms love it because they sign people up for 12 months, they come for three weeks, and four weeks, maybe five or six, and then they disappear. So, you know, gym member, gym love it. Long-term gym members hate it. Most of them, will, if you ask most gym members, they're the least favourite time of the year. I guarantee you it'll be the New Year's period. I know, um, although most of our stuff I've got uh, in-house here, um, I used to hate it. <laughs> They'd be packed. There'd be people, you'd be watching people who are completely, not been trained on how to use equipment drive you bonkers and there's another reason why people get sick and injured and tired so what does it mean to you very very important number one so write it down what it is how are you going to achieve that what steps are you going to take to ensure that you get to your goal you know weight loss is a pretty common one out in the big wide world so what steps do you need to take so that you can get to your healthy goal weight okay do you are you reviewing your diet? Is it healthy? What are you changing? Write it down. Exercise. What movements can you currently do? What do you need to do to, to help achieve or to align that with the goals that you're chasing? Big one, big one. And we'll dive more into the to the health and fitness one, particularly the exercise piece of it um, shortly. So make sure you've got a path and a plan. Again, write it down. Can't say it enough. Once you've got your plan in place, okay, cool, great, good job. But, but, 
here we go. Make sure you've got some little steps that you want to achieve along the way. You know, a lot of people have heard of big ha BHAG, which is big, hairy, audacious goal. That's your, that's your gold medal, that's the winning. Uh, but along the way, make sure you've got some little celebrations to have. You know, if your goal is 10 kilos, set one kilo goals, s smaller goals, and you know, give yourself a big pat on the back when you do do that. Fantastic, good job, nice work, you know. Buy a new piece of clothing, set yourself a, a, something that you can gain out of it each time, whether it's, you know, something you've got to go and purchase or go out for dinner or whatever. Whatever it is that you want to achieve, make sure that you can, um, make sure that you celebrate all those little steps, steps along the way. Okay, health and fitness. Obviously, 55% of goals are related to that. Um, we're going to talk particularly the fitness piece because that's mostly um, where the people we see fail. Um, <laughs> problem number one. Most people, why they fail their, their goal or their resolution um, is that they go out, all out, hard, straight away. People go to the gym. They start pushing weights around. They start running. Guess what happens? They get sore. They get tired, they get injured. Not real enjoyable when that happens, is it? And it's gonna put a big dent in your confidence in achieving your goal. So what you should do, start very, very easy and make the routine concrete. You know, you're better off going out and walking for five days a week than going out running twice and getting sick, sore, tired and injured and then not wanting to do it again. Oh, I fucking hate running. God, how many times have we heard that story? I'm sure everyone's got a story. When it comes to movement, make sure it's something that you enjoy. It's so, so important that when you go out that door, you're looking forward to it, you're pumped, you're excited. Is that doing stuff with friends? Is it riding? Is it running? Is it swimming? Is it going to the gym? Is it dancing? Is it some class that you like to do? Make sure it's enjoyable. A lot of people are very social animals. Drag a mate along, drag a friend along with you and say, hey, let's. can you come and help me achieve my goal? I want to do this each week. Would you, would you like to join me? Makes you accountable. Someone's knocking on your door, ringing you up, going, hey, where are you? Are we still meeting? Very, very important as well. So make sure you get your routine in place first. I can't stress that enough before you start progressing it to a point that, you know, it becomes hard work. And, you know, as most personal trainers or coaches will tell you, you've got to walk before you can run, although some of them don't. And uh, that's another story for another day. Fair. To, to be fair, so, okay, step number one is create your routine, create your habit, and make it enjoyable. Very, very important. Step two, progress it, as we just mentioned. Once you've got your habit in place and you're looking forward to getting up each day, push yourself a little, you know. If you're going out walking five days, start a jog, walk run one of those days, or, you know, lift a little bit more weight, or make the, whatever it is you're doing a little bit longer, or whatever it is, but learn to progress, and progress slowly. Don't jump all in again. As soon as you do that, again, sick, tired, injured. Something that no one anywhere wants to happen. It's not enjoyable, and again, guarantee you'll end up one of those 80% of people who fail, and you don't want to be one of those 80% of people, do you? No, not exactly. So, if you're sitting here now thinking, okay, what can I do? I'm about to fall off the wagon. Maybe reassess. How are you going to get to your goal? What I'm doing is not enjoyable. It's I don't like it. Okay, find another way. Driving along the highway, the highway's closed. What do you do? Do you just sit there and wait? Or do you find an alternative route? I think most people get in their car and find another way around, don't they? So it's not a fixed path to where you want to go. It's, I have a, have a saying that I stole off someone somewhere, um, and thank you to whoever you were, but um, it's basically, if it's not fuck yeah, it's a no. Like, that's how you should feel about whatever it is you're trying to achieve. It's like, yep, I love doing this. I'm looking forward to this, going out and doing it. You're more likely to achieve it. So there's a good one for you. Fuck yeah or no. So if what you're doing is not enjoyable, change it. Do something you'd rather be doing. You know, go, if you don't like going to the gym, don't go to the gym. Find another way of moving. Is it walking? Is it running? Is it cycling? Is it dancing? Is it classes? God, there's a million choices out there these days. Surely there will be something out there that you enjoy. Maybe make it challenging, you know. Um, Slacklining. There's something for you. Something different. Challenges the whole body. Learning a new skill. Bunch of cool people around there doing it. And can take you to some pretty crazy places. <laughs> if you don't have a fear of heights, that's for sure. 
So um, there's, you know, find something that's going to challenge you and, and that you're going to enjoy. Really important. I know I've been banging on about it. Can't stress it enough, though. That's for sure. Okay. So right now you're sitting at home, going, man, I really need to, I really need to keep this going, keep this going. Again, ring a mate up, bribe them, do whatever it takes to get them involved with you. Because some days you're going to need it for motivation. Really, really important. Um, some people don't need that. And that's cool. Go your hardest by yourself. Look, but a lot of people need that accountability. What, well, how often do you revisit your goal? Do you see it every day? Do you hang it up on your mirror or a wall or a door or a fridge? Or do you write it down every day? Um, I've got a process but I've given my own. I'm giving myself some... Uh, BHAG sized goals and I write down every single day and every single day I write down a step that I need to uh, achieve to, to bring me closer to my goal so that most of mine are generally training related and you know, years ago I set, it, set myself a goal, it took me um, you know, about three years to achieve it but we got there in the end but I had little goals along the way and I was celebrating each of those little milestones So, and I wrote that down every single day in my diary what my goal was and what I'm doing today to achieve that there's plenty of books and diaries and things that allow you to um to do that as part of the process so um yeah that's a that's another great way to, to remain accountable and, and have it in your face keep telling yourself you're going to achieve it it's it's so so important mentally to to do that and that will um motivate you hopefully it will hopefully keep you far more motivated because it's there okay what am i doing what am i doing what what can i do today to be one step closer you know a lot of health and fitness ones it might be you know you, you need to change your eating you might need to stop eating takeaway five nights a week um cook home at home more often or it might be changing the quantity that you eat so you know what do i do there i make sure that in my house i've only got things that fit within my personal guidelines of how i'm what i'm going to achieve and i really don't care dietary wise what you do <laughs> really don't give a shit to be fair um i would definitely um be looking at things like that you know so each time that you you go to the fridge you open it up and there's a good selection of healthy food in there or the, the type of food that you're wanting to eat make sure it's not an oversupply too because eating healthy is great but eating too much healthy is still too much so you know make sure you're, you're shopping right and you're you're putting those little pieces of the puzzle puzzle together and um, making sure that you, you do everything in your power to achieve it. And I guess the, the lastly, before we uh, shoot off, is invest in help. Cannot, cannot promote professional help for anything highly enough. Help, fitness, nutrition, whatever it is, monetary, you know, go and see a financial planner, whatever. Trainers, coaches, nutritionists, all those people are there to help you. And they're great because they will help you be accountable. They'll set you, hopefully, realistic and achievable goals. If you're trouble having trouble putting a plan together on on how you want to achieve what you want to achieve, invest in these people. These guys and girls know what they're doing most of the time and are there to help you along the way. If you go and say, hey, this is what I'd like to achieve, how can you help me? I have no doubt that they are going to be able to help you. Uh, and they're going to hopefully provide you with a plan or a strategy that's going to be sustainable in the long term, like we spoke about. You know, don't run before you can walk, kind of thing. So make sure you get on top of that and seek professional help, whatever it is you want to achieve. There, you, I can't recommend them highly enough. So, quick overview before I shoot off. I got to go shortly. So, what are we doing? We're setting smart goals, achievable goals. We're going to write them down, and we're going to write down how we're going to get there. We're going to invest in our friends and hopefully they're going to help us along to keep us accountable. And then we're going to make sure that we put ourselves in a position to achieve what we want to achieve. So, you know, removing food from the fridge, ensuring that, you know, we've got a plan. Um, help getting professionals to, to help us achieve what we, what we want to achieve. So get on top of that today. If you're on YouTube, down there somewhere, Tell us what your goal is and how you're going to achieve it. Same on Facebook or Instagram, the old gram. Make sure you um, let us know down there what you want to achieve and how you're going about doing this so that it's going to be successful. Hit us up if you've got any questions. We're more than happy to help. Absolutely more than happy to help. And um, 
hopefully we can you know inspire someone so guys and girls thank you very much for um joining us today really appreciate it again if you are on youtube hit the old subscribe button and um make sure you hear um straight away when we drop our next episode of um get coached if you're on facebook same give us a give it a like share it with your friends and family we'd be really appreciative and grateful if you could do that it would be fantastic and um make sure you check out getcoach.com if you want all cool stuff like this and um our range of apparel and check out what we do there um and make sure you check us out on instagram at get coached on twitter at get coached as well facebook we're, we're there everywhere so make sure you check us out because um you know we're throwing out um not just these we're we're putting out other info in other formats so make sure you give us a follow and a like and share with your friends guys it would be greatly appreciated go get that goal that you want i know you want to do it i know you can do it so get after it and rock and roll cheers